I'm Manika from the FTC team Bites of Kit Kats, and today I'm going to show you a line follower program that uses a PID controller to follow a line. A PID controller has three parts as shown on the screen, P for proportional, I for integrative, and D for derivative. This video will teach you about the PID controller and how you can implement it in code. You probably know that the PID controller is not the only line follower method. There are simpler methods, such as the two-level line follower and the three-level line follower. The two-level line follower is very inefficient, since whatever the light sends are reading, the robot always turns the same. In a two-level line follower, the robot never moves straight, even if it is right on the edge of the line, which is very inconvenient. A three-level line follower has three actions for the robot. Turn right, go straight, and turn left. It's a little better than a two-level line follower, since at least some of the time you're going straight. Even though we have a go straight action in this line follower, it will still zigzag quite a lot. We'll break the PID controller into three parts, and we'll start with the proportional section. A proportional line follower includes different types of turns, instead of just different directions. Based on the light value, the turn values change as well. For example, if the light sensor reading indicates we are close to the line, we do a small turn, but if we are farther away from the line, we do make a large turn. Proportional means there is a linear relationship between the two variables. That means a graph of the two variables against each other produces a straight line, as shown in the diagram. The equation for the proportional part of the PID controller is k times error. In this equation, k is a proportional constant. The proportional constant's value is taken from the slope of the line in our graph. You multiply the constant by the error to get the turn value. The pseudocode for the P controller is shown. Now it might seem intimidating, but it is actually very simple. The first line defines the kp, the proportional constant, which is multiplied by 10. The next line defines the offset, which is the average of the white and black light sensor values. Then we have a loop that reads the light sensor value, finds the error, then calculates the turn values using our proportional constant. Now we'll start on the integrative part of the PID controller. The integrative is the running total of the errors over time. This is the equation for the integrative. Integrative equals integrative plus error. When the error keeps the same sign, like a negative 3 error, and next a negative 5 error, the integral grows bigger, making the robot want to overshoot the turn to get back to the middle. The integral is important since it helps the controller fix small errors that the proportional may not be able to take care of. The proportional algorithm could fix it, but it results in a line follower that wobbles back and forth. The equation for the proportional integrative controller is turn equals kp times error plus ki times integral. The pseudocode is shown on the screen. The bold code shows the added code of the integral. The ki is constant for the integral that is also multiplied by 100, so we don't have to hassle with all the decimals. We start the variable integral at 0, but it is changed later on in the code. In the loop, we add all the errors together. Finally, we add the constant times integral and add it to the constant times proportional to get the turn. So far, we have a proportional term that fixes the errors in the present. The integral term fixes past errors. Is there a way we could fix future errors too? That's what the derivative is for. The derivative helps to fix future errors by predicting the next error. Here's the equation for the derivative. Next error equals current error plus current error minus previous error. Why does this work? This works because if you can find the change from the previous error to the error now, you can add it to the current error to potentially guess the next error. This is the complete equation for the PID controller. Turn equals kp times error plus ki times integral plus kd times derivative. The pseudocode is shown on the screen. The bold code is the added derivative code. We define the constant for the derivative, define a last error variable, and a derivative variable. In the loop, we subtract the last error from the current error to make the derivative. Then, we multiply the kd times the derivative and add it to the proportional section and the integral part for the turn value. At the end of the loop, we define the current error as past error. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out our PID controller part 2 for the complete instructions on how to code the controller in EV3. Please subscribe and like if you have any questions.